This morning I'm working on the third of three large underpaintings. The idea is actually to just get as much paint as possible in the right spots on the canvas and not to take too long doing it. But somehow it always takes me a while to figure out, okay, what do I want underneath? How is it going to work? with what ends up being the final landscape. <clears throat> this canvas is uh, 36 by 72 inches. It's a rather bit of a giant. I have a studio visit coming along this afternoon as well. So that's kind of got me preoccupied. That's, that's still a little high. It's one of the things about doing the underpainting is that it gives you a chance to work out the composition. In this case, I've got some really dark seas at the bottom with some waves. From a sunny winter day after a storm, looking out over the Georgia Strait. The nice thing about doing this is the more energy you can get into your feel for the landscape at this stage, the easier it is to build up the paint and keep that energy as you keep working on the canvas. Okay, let's see now. If we do maybe just... Ah, that's a little better. A little better place for the mountains to be. I often do these different shades of colors in the underpainting, not because there's a particular difference between the orange and the red overall when I'm working with various shades of blue. I mean, there is some. There's some significance to do that. But mostly, it's to give me some idea of placement so that I don't get lost when I start working on the canvas. As you can see, I love to work on my whole canvas at once, and I continue to do that right up till the time I finish the painting. On the larger ones, this is even a little bit more difficult than the smaller ones because it's such a large canvas, and to keep working wet on wet means that you, well, that you paint as if someone is chasing you, as someone wants to do Okay, now I know there's going to be a rock there that comes up from the bottom. But mostly, now we're down to the sea. Just let that not drip too badly in there. It doesn't show up later, because that's probably the lightest part of my sky, is that middle piece there. Okay. The sea in this case is almost blue-black, and the waves are sharp and white. And I want this red underneath to give it some depth, so it doesn't become super flat and still. I want that water to be still moving, no matter how dark I make it. And part of being able to do that is to put the red underneath. As you see, I'm not using any fancy technique here. Just a matter of getting that paint on the canvas. Okay. A little bit more here. I'm using water mixable oils. And so what I'm thinning here with is straight water to make these washes. I love to work in my bare feet. And relaxed and comfortable as clothing as possible. One of the things about painting with a lot of expression and a lot of emotion is being able to paint with your whole body. You're not painting with your brush, you're painting with your stomach and your breath. And it's hard to do that if you decide to dab at it and just sort of poke at it. You really must 
let the movement of the whole canvas and your body together complement each other and become the work that you want to express. It's not going to come from the paint itself, but the energy you put into the painting. Okay. I know I've got some white waves in here, so I'm not worrying about that flying too much. That feels about right. We'll call her good for this morning. Thank you very much. Tara Welch.